Thanks for stopping by the video art house. Try not to make even more of a mess. Don't 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 Always willing to try something new. This is the inaugural running of Week in Review. My name is Comic Book Man and Bo Sanchez. Hey folks, how you doing? Comic Book Man here. Welcome to my video outhouse. It's time for a new segment, which is starting very first one today, and it's called Week in Review. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look back at the week that just was in comic books. Uh, ship shape projects into the future. This is going to be after the fact, taking a look back at the same week. And this is the week for... What was last week's shipping? Uh, Jan July the... Um, June. June 30th. June 30th. Or June 30th, 2010. June 30th. Uh, Month ended on the 30th. A couple of things happened this week. Uh, one of the things that happened when we do ship shape is we can't really tell what's going to be hot in the future. You sort of get some kind of idea, but you can't really tell for sure. One of the things that came out last week, which we didn't know was going to be a big hit, was Death of Dracula. This book right here. Bo, tell us about Death of Dracula. Why was it such a big deal? This one shot is the... This, this one shot sets up uh, this week's shipping X-Men number one. And it sets a new paradigm, let's say, for vampires in the Marvel Universe. Now, of course, as you see from the cover, this is the death of Dracula. Uh, his two sons uh, get together with a vampire nation, in case you didn't happen to watch, let's say, Blade, you know, the whole concept of the vampire nation. They get together, they hang out, and they decide to make a change, and the change is to bump off, uh, one of their sons decides to, move, to bump off their old man. Uh, so this sets up X-Men number one. Marvel kind of warned people to basically pay attention to this. This book was, if you picked it up when it came out, because it's already sold out, it was $3.99. It's already going into the second printing. And right now in the uh, off comic book sh stop shop market and even comic shops that have to pick up a copy, this thing's selling for 7 or 8 bucks a pop already. That's crazy. So, That's crazy. But, you know, they're going to reprint it. The reprint will be out in a couple weeks. Probably, probably by the time San Diego rolls around, the reprint will be out. Another big story that happened this week, which went under a lot of people's radars, was this, uh, Iron Man Annual. Now, this is an important book for a lot of reasons. Why don't you tell us what was so special about this book, outside of it being a very thick annual. Iron Man Annual, Invisible Iron Man Number 1, was available in comic book shops and as a digital download on the same day. Same so day. So, if, you, if you, you know, if you didn't happen to wander into a store that day... You like could, Alternate Reality. Like Alternate Reality. You could basically go online. I think it was like $2.99 for the download. You could download it. Now, what's interesting about this is that Marvel let everyone know this is going to be available day and date at the same time. This $4.99 uh, annual is 60 pages. It's very thick. It's very thick. This is actually a three-issue limited series, but because it was available online as a download, Marvel was able to sell it for only $4.99. That's right. How did it do as a download? Uh, suppose it's doing quite well. And, and uh, for all you Mandarin fans out there, this is basically a Mandarin-centric story, and you haven't seen Mandarin in a while. In fact, Fraction hasn't even dealt with Mandarin yet. So this is the first time Matt Fraction has even dealt with the concept of the Mandarin. Now, a lot of uh, a lot of people are wondering out there about the future of the industry, down, digital downloads as opposed to coming into a shop like Alternate Rail and picking one of these up. One of the things that I had suggested to Bo was that Marvel or DC should do is pick a miniseries like War of the Supermen and announce that it's going to be available. Each issue, a weekly miniseries, can be available online, you know, as a download. Okay, at the same day that it hits the racks and chart what happens with that book uh, during the course of the four weeks. Now, as, as a dealer, I would need to have it returnable because if you're going to read it online and not come into the store to pick it up, well, I'm not going to pre-order a bunch of copies then, okay, and be sitting on them. So it needs to be returnable. But if, if DC and Marvel really want to experiment with, it, with that market, that's what they ought to do. They ought to be able to take a miniseries or even a special like this, make it returnable, put it online, same day it comes out, make it returnable, and then a month later see what happens to the numbers. I would only do stuff that was animated. I don't know why. If it didn't move, I wouldn't. I, I'd rather have it in hard. Well, that's your draw. It's the it's the drawback to doing a digital download. The pages don't move. You're reading a comic book. Right. It, you're reading an actual page right. on your iPad. I would it doesn't move. It doesn't, it doesn't interact or dance around or anything. I just rather have my comic book. Right. Okay. Uh, the big story this week, the big big story, which was everywhere this week, was of course Wonder Woman 600, where she gets her new costume. Now we've talked about this in DC news. Uh, but what do you think about the costume? I think the costume sucks, but... <laughs> Listening to what J. J. Michael Swazinski said, the costume is functional. He's, I mean, uh, he has a lot of friends who are in other industries other than comics, and, you know, and all of his women friends went, uh, A, she hasn't changed her outfit since 1941, and B... How could you fight in something like this without your breast popping out every time you threw a punch? Of course, we're all forgetting about the early 90s where Dan Didato, 
or no, Mike Diodato. Mike, Mike Diodato. Mike uh, Diodato uh, revamped the costume for like ten issues, where she was wearing a black leather jacket and black sh leather shorts and black boots, and everybody was crazy about that. And they sold. I remember the T-shirt was black T-shirt with the Wonder Woman symbol on it. Uh, they sold some T-shirts with that. It was ten issues, and then John Byrne came in with issue one hundred and put her back. I'm not wearing it like that. Uh, so, I mean, it's not like she's never changed her costume before. No, I and mean, you're at the point where she's hanging out with Ai Ching, she's wearing a white outfit and fighting people in pants suits. Yeah, but Straczynski uh, talks about that in this and in his, in his afterwards. Is yeah, that, I mean, that's not as big as this is. Basically, the big deal, he, he decided to change the costume. He actually designed the costume because he said he wanted to look like a street fighter and he wanted her outfit to look functional instead of her wearing a superhero costume, which fits into the general tone of what he's doing with the book and the whole Paradise Island blowing up and new pissed history and all that other stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also this week we had Action Comics number 890. Lex Luthor has taken over this book for at least 10 issues for the run-up to issue 900. Have you read this? Have you taken a look at this? Uh, yeah, I read it. This is uh, Paul Carnell's first issue. This was supposed to be Mark Guggenheim's first issue. Mark Guggenheim decided not to hang around, so he brought in Paul Cornell to send him to exclusive. And the story involves Lex Luthor wanting to get back to having the powers of being a White Lantern, and that's what Orange this, Lantern. Orange Lantern. That's the, basically that's why he's walking around in a suit. He wants to have powers again. He wants to be a big deal because Superman. By the way, in case you didn't know, he's walking across the country now, so he's not hanging out in Metropolis anymore. What are Orange powers? Orange Lantern. What, what, what were his powers as an Orange Theory Lantern? Or? Well, the, or, the Orange Lantern is avarice, as I remember it, and so he covets the ring and he uh, wants it back. But he basically just gave him Green Lantern powers, except it was an orange orange ring. Uh, why don't you talk about Zuda Comics while I get that? <laughs> Zuda Comics was uh, basically a, Zuda Comics was a setup from DC. Uh, what, what would happen is you'd have some creators who weren't exactly big deal names, or people who sort of sort of dabble in comics. They did stuff that were online. They would have about twelve or thirteen candidates. You would come in and you would vote, and they would pick this this one particular concept, and they would keep going with it. DC this week shut the website down. You can still get the stuff as a digital download, but DC's not running it per se. So it's it's the death of their initial digital line. Is it ever coming back? No. Never ever? No. Well, what's the point of digital comics then if you're going to have a digital comics well, line and dump it? Well, these are digital comics done by people who you didn't know. And yeah. so that was the initial drawback. You know, these are like people, oh, hi, I want to get into comics. Oh, you want to get into comics? Oh, you want to get into comics? Well, let's come up with a comic. Let's do it on the digital thing. And, you know, people tend to be a little more picky. I mean, this is written by Paul Cornell. I've heard of Paul Cornell. Most of people who worked in Zuda, no one ever heard of. Oh, your chance to, it was your chance to break in. It was your chance to break in. Did but anything pop up? Now you can drag your ass down to a con and beg. Oh, they did a couple. <laughs> I mean, uh, the first big success they had was High Noon, but it was by Steve Ellis, who had already been working in comics for a while. He did the silences and a bunch of stuff so from Marvel and DC. Anybody. So it didn't really break anybody. So as in that respect, it didn't really work. Okay. Uh, that's about it for the news for this week, That's right? about it. That's about I it for the news it. this week. So... That's it. That's all I got time for. But you can go to the store's website and find out more information like what we just talked about. And the store's website is at Sarah. Once you let your mind go numb, the rest is easy. www.maraltonatreality.com So stop off the store's website. Check out all the news that he sends me that I post up, which involves all this stuff that we just and talked about. Comment on this. And comment on this. Leave us some comments on Facebook or or, or, or on, uh, on, what's that other thing we're on? Oh, YouTube. YouTube. Right. YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> Until Facebook, next time, YouTube, both in reality. this comic book man and Bo saying bye. The hero of the month this month at Alternate Reality is the Star Spangled Avenger himself, Captain America. That's right, all my Captain America trades are 25% off all month long. Hardcover, softcovers, masterworks, essentials, everything that's a Captain America trade paperback is 25% off all month long here at Alternate Reality.